So now that we've seen how we can build a high capacity memory model that has a smooth trade-off in the number of memories that can be stored in it and the richness of those memories, we ask how can both the functions of spatial map mapping and memory be implemented at the implementation level in the brain? And more specifically ask, can we build a mechanistic model of the hippocampal complex that unifies spatial and episodic memory and has high capacity? So as we saw before, hippocampus is this area that has both of these important roles of spatial mapping and episodic memory. And the question is, why is the same brain area tasked with these two seemingly independent roles? So hippocampus also interacts with entorhinal cortex, which is a region of the brain that lies close to hippocampus. And place cells have been found in the hippocampus, which fire at certain locations in 2D space. Whereas grid cells have been found in the entorhinal cortex, which fire at multiple locations in a 2D space, forming a grid-like pattern. And so in order to model the interactions between the hippocampus and the entorhinal cortex, we extend mesh to build a grid hippocampal model. We take the random k hot code and the top k winner take all dynamics on the label layer and replace it with the modular one hot grid code and modular attracted dynamics of grid modules. So we replace this k hot code with one hot code that's modular and periodic and represents a state on a ring. And we further generalize this to 2D code, which represents a state on a torus. And this leads us to a model called vector hash or vector hippocampal scaffold memory with heteroassociation. This model has three main components, grid cells with their modular attracted dynamics, hippocampal cells with their continuous sparse activations, and non-grid entorhinal cells that represent external sensory observations. And the key is that the grid cells together with hippocampus form this rigid structured invariant scaffold with fixed weights and content can be stored in this network by representing arbitrary patterns in the non-grid entorhinal cortex that can be associated with the scaffold through heteroassociation. And you can think of this model as analogous to a hippocampal clothes line where hippocampus together with the grid cells forms this structured invariant scaffold onto which external cues can be hooked much in the same way as clothes can be hooked onto a clothes line. So mesh in, uh, vector hash inherits all properties of mesh. Uh, and in addition, it shows this strong generalization property in the scaffold, where to train the scaffold, the, the scaffold needs to be trained on only a small vanishing fraction of the grid coding state for it to stabilize all the grid coding states as fixed points. Thus, it generalizes to states that it hasn't even seen before. And we can think of the scaffold weights as weights that can be learned once through early spatial exploration and then held fixed for life. The same core architecture in vector hash enables all three forms of memory, retrieval of random items, retrieval of spatial information like landmarks and position, and retrieval of sequential episodic memories. So we first look at item memory and we examine the scaffold dynamics. So the grid cells project to the hippocampal layer through random projections and back projections from hippocampus to the grid cells are learned through one shot Hebbian learning, which couples the co-active grid cells in different grid modules. Now, given a noisy hippocampal state, that is a noisy version of an, a hippocampal state that was previously stored in this network, through projection to the grid layer and through its winner-take-all dynamics, uh, modular attracted dynamics in the recurrent connections of grid layer, the network can actually recover the hippocampal state, which matches the original hippocampal state, establishing that the scaffold is a robust attractor. Further, because of the exponential capacity of grid cells, this network inherits exponentially many fixed points. And more importantly, the number of hippocampal cells needed to support these exponentially many fixed points only grows linearly with the number of grid modules, establishing the truly exponential capacity of the scaffold. Further, we find that the scaffold forms large uniform bases around its fixed points. So given the magnitude of the perturbation, which is four times the magnitude of the hippocampal state, we can still recover the hippocampal state at least half of the times. So this establishes that the entorhinal hippocampal network creates a high capacity robust scaffold with an exponentially large number of fixed points. Now, once we have the scaffold, we can store arbitrary information into this network by simply linking arbitrary sensory inputs to the scaffold. 
And given any stored sensory inputs in the network, we can reconstruct these sensory inputs using internal network dynamics. We find that for patterns up to the order of the number of hippocampal cells, vector hash acts as a perfect associative memory. With increasingly large number of stored items, pattern recall is degraded, but it only degrades very smoothly. This establishes that the scaffold can be associated with arbitrary inputs to generate a flexible high capacity memory continuum similar to mesh. And similar to mesh, vector hash also has information where total information is invariant to the number of stored patterns. Next, we look at spatial memory. The same core architecture in vector hash can enable spatial memory by just adding velocity inputs to the grid board. Given an agent that explores a spatial environment, the velocity inputs update the grid board that represent locations in the space. And sensory landmark inputs can be associated with these grid codes. And thus, this leads to bidirectional inference in familiar environments. Given a scene landmark, the network is able to reconstruct uh, the, grid, the corresponding grid state that represents the corresponding position where the landmark was seen. And similarly, given a known position represented by a given grid state, the network is able to reconstruct the landmark that was seen at that position. This architecture also leads to zero-shot inference in novel environments. Given an agent that observes landmarks during an initial exploratory trajectory in a novel environment, the network leads to zero-shot prediction of landmarks on a novel trajectory. Next, we look at episodic memory. Here, instead of learning sequences by learning high-dimensional transitions in this high-dimensional space, vector hash maps the problem of learning these high-dimensional transitions to simply learning low-dimensional transitions on a sequence scaffold. And high-dimensional sensory inputs can then simply be associated with the scaffold. Let's look at how this can be implemented in vector hash. So we use the same core architecture in vector hash and learn a, a multi-layer perceptron where the multi-layer perceptron learns the next action predictions in an abstract sequence on the grid coding space. This network through low dimensional velocity updates is able to store very long sequences, which is in contrast with existing baseline Hopfield models, which have a catastrophic drop because they are trying to learn transitions in this high dimensional space and they fail even when they're aided with the scaffold. We find that the same architecture is able to store sequence scaffolds of arbitrary shapes. It has a high capacity. And more importantly, the high capacity is enabled by a very few number of cells in the scaffold. You can see the difference between the scale on the x-axis, which indicates the number of cells, and on the y-axis, which indicate the length of these sequences. And so this is made possible only because this network is learning low dimensional transitions rather than learning high dimensional transitions. Once we have the scaffold, we can now store information into this uh, by simply associating sensory inputs with different parts of the scaffold. And this leads to the same optimal memory continuum leading to storage of exponentially long sequences. And here this network architecture has hippocampus driven transitions, but the same optimal memory continuum can also be achieved by an alternative architecture that has sensory driven transitions. And this is in contrast with existing networks that try to learn sequences by learning transitions in a high dimensional space and hence show a catastrophic drop. So qualitatively, both sequence memory architectures with grid cells are enabled by velocity updates to grid codes that are low dimensional. And this enables us to map a problem of learning transitions in this high dimensional space to simply learning transitions on a low dimensional sequence scaffold that turns out to be highly effective in memorizing sequences. We also find that vector hash provides a neural model for memory palaces. Memory palace is a mnemonic technique where memory athletes try to remember this long list of items, for instance, a deck of cards, and they imagine themselves as walking through a familiar spatial environment, for instance, their home. And as they walk through this familiar spatial environment, they take these new list of items that they want to remember and place them on different landmarks through this path. So in vector hash, we add a mnemonic input that represents these new items. 
The path through the environment is encoded in the sequence scaffold, which gets associated with sensory landmark inputs represented by the sensory layer. And the new items are then associated with these landmark, landmark inputs uh, through pseudo-inverse learning. We find that in this model, even though the recall of the sensory items degrades with the increase in the length of items that need to be remembered, the recall of the list of items itself is perfect. And this can also be seen numerically. So now that we've seen everything that vector hash can accomplish, we look at the multiple aspects of hippocampal phenomen phenomenology that also emerge in vector hash. So first we look at high capacity spatial memory. So this is an experiment where 11 different rooms were found to have 11 different place cell maps that were orthogonal to each other, establishing the high capacity of the system. And so we train vector hash under a protocol where we sequentially train it on these 11 rooms. And we look at the stability of the place cell maps during training, after all the maps have been learned, and also in the absence of sensory cues. We find that these place cell maps are highly stable across these rooms, and they do not have interference. The representations learned across these rooms are orthogonal as found in experiments. And this happens because vector hash allocates different parts of the grid coding space to represent these rooms, which leads to decorrelated underlying grid codes, leading to orthogonal place cell representations. Now, although this experiment didn't look at grid codes, we can uh, examine grid cell firing fields in vector hash, since this is a mechanistic model. And so we find that uh, the, the grid cell maps across rooms are shifted versions of each other, but this do preserve cell-cell correlations. There's a wide range of other hippocampal phenomenology that also emerges in vector hash, including splitter cells, root-dependent cells, directional cells, and task-dependent cells. Further, we find that observations of memory consolidation also emerge in vector hash. So given a sensory input that is repeatedly seen or recalled, the corresponding weights in vector hash get strengthened. And that leads to these repeated patterns being robust to lesions of the hippocampus relative to unrepeated patterns, which haven't been reinforced. And this can also be seen numerically in the sensory recovery error of repeated patterns, which, which is much lower than that of unrepeated patterns. And this turns out to be consistent with the multiple trace theory of hippocampus. So to summarize, vector hash is the first hippocampal entorhinal model that unifies high capacity item memory, spatial memory, and episodic memory. Vector hash uses the same representational structure used in spatial mapping to generate this high capacity episodic memory. And multiple aspects of hippocampal phenomenology emerge in vector hash. <laughs>